All right, so now we're gonna take a look at how to make the cover art. We're gonna start by jumping back into Houdini and building this terrain. And then what we're gonna do is just create a tile for this that we can then bring over to Maya and then instance around. Then we're gonna jump out of Maya, talk about instancing, and then uh, bring in our value metrics, lay them out, and talk about texturing, or texturing and shading techniques and go over the composite as well. So, um, starting from scratch, we're going to just lay, uh, build the terrain. So I'm going to start with a height field. So this will be a little bit, a little bit of review. If you guys did the Houdini terrains or Houdini uh, landscapes on the number, number workshop. So go ahead and lay down a geometry node. I'll rename this terrain, jump inside of there and I'll do tab HF for height field. And this will be the base. Of our terrain to get this going what we'll do is throw down a height field so a, a, a hf high field and then um we'll do noise plug that in so um, i'm not going to go over all these settings guy uh with you guys just because we've already done that in the houdini landscapes so um, i'm just going to give you guys the settings i use i switch this over to cellular um, which helps it give us this um this more mountain terrain like feel. I'm going to increase my element size to 600. And then um, I'm gonna, what, I'm, what I'm gonna do now is try to get this uh, peak here in the center. So I'll just middle click on this offset and move this over like that. Cool, so I'll just put 600 in there. Cool, and then we'll move on from there. Um, next up we have um, high field distort and this is going to be right now it looks very CG because because we got these very um, cellular looking lines so what we'll do is HF noise whoops um, H, actually uh, HF uh, distort by noise plug that in and then You'll notice that the details that it's given us right now are very micro. So what we'll do is we'll just turn up the element size and then really crank up the amplitude like that. And what that's going to do is just have to break up these lines like this. Um, I'll really crank up the element size to 200 right there and then we'll do 200 for the amplitude. So that's before and after. So it's looking way more organic at this point. Next up, we'll do another high field distort by noise. Plug that in. Default settings for that is all good. Um, next up, we have high field erode. And then we'll take a look at this. We'll just have, um, we can do visualization and then just do compute range to fix that gradient. And then we'll just hit play to get some erosion effect effects. So last thing that we want to do, um, I'm going to go ahead and turn off this visualize for now. Um, the train by itself is looking pretty good. We're going to want to uh, kind of smash this down so we can use it as a tile so we can duplicate this around pretty easily. Right now, just because we have this really big uh, peak on the side, it's a little bit difficult to do. So to do that, we'll convert it to polygon. So high field, uh, convert high field, which will convert it over to polygons. So from a high field volume to a polygon. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a hotspot and um, multiply this down by that. So to create that hotspot, what we'll do is sphere. We'll colorize this as white. And this is just to get something at the origin. Um, I'll go ahead and make this uh, white. And we'll drop down another color node. And we'll make this one black. So now what we can do is do an attribute transfer. Plug both of those in. And then, uh, whoops, so we'll need to plug the, the first input being the uh, terrain. And then we'll go, to, go over to conditions. And then we'll go up really, really high on this blend with something like, just try a thousand really quick. So 
you start to see that we get um, a gradient going. And then I'm just going to bring this down until we get some black around the edges. Uh, the value I'm going to leave off with is just 910. And then um, what we'll do is we'll throw down a point node so that we can then do a multiplication between our attributes. So right now what we want to do is take our color values and multiply it by our height value, which will um, lower these values a bit. Um, before we do that, what we'll need to do is we'll just make sure that this is actually uh, on the ground plane. So going back up to our um, height field nose, we'll just click on center noise. And what that'll do is just kind of shift it up. If you don't see a shift, it's probably because the erosion node is cached. So what you'll do is go back to the erosion node and uh, just go back to the first frame and just hit play out from there. I'll let that get to about frame 10 or so. Hit stop. Cool. So to multiply by the position by the color, what we're going to have to do is we're going to use the set command. And then what we're going to do is self.x, so self meet being point position. Um, if you want to get to know the point stuff a lot more, check out the randomization uh, title. Um, it goes into it a lot more. So then we'll do self.x or self.y times add attribute cd, and then we can do either red, green, or blue for that. And then the last one will be just be self.z. Cool. So um, last thing we want to do is we just want to kind of come up here to our height field and um, we're going to give us this some more uh, scale. So we'll j bump this up to 2000 by 2000 and that's going to give us a little bit more terrain to work with so that we can actually gradient this thing a little bit better. So running it through all the layers that we did before, we'll go ahead and throw, um, go to your, our road node and go back and then just hit play. Um, it will take a lot more memory and a lot more uh, calculation time on the CPU to do this larger one. Um, so be really careful not to go much, much higher from where we're at here. We'll convert it, and then now we'll go back down to the point. So now we we'll see it's a little bit, um, a little bit more manageable. And then if we want to kind of um, push this a little bit more, what we can do is we can do a distance threshold. Um, currently it's going from a, a gray value right here or a white value from right here. And what we're going to want to do is um, kind of push it out a little bit more. So we can do that by using the distance threshold. So we'll just kind of push this up a little bit. So the higher we go with that, the more it's going to push that white value out. Um, so I'm just going to set this to a value of 250. Cool. So last thing what we have to do is cache it out. So I'll just go ahead and save this. It'll be um, chapter 13 cover art. And then we'll just do uh, terrain. To cache it out, um, we'll just use an OBJ uh, format. Um, it's a pretty old school format that's really um, reliable when it comes to getting uh, between packages, especially for um, still objects like this. So anything with cache, I'd probably would use Alembic, but um, for now we'll just use, so we'll do wrap output, uh, wrap geometry output. We'll plug that in and then um, we'll just call this train version one dot OBJ. Um, we'll go ahead and save that, save to disk. And now what we, need, we need one more thing before going over to Maya. And specifically we'll see in the cover art, we'll see that we have uh, two different layers here. We have this like bright layer that's kind of like on the surfaces of this, um, which kind of makes it feel like the sun was beating down, be, uh, beating down on maybe the uh, the the train there. Um, the colorization of that got a little bit a little bit different. So what I'm gonna do is create a mask for that. So what we'll do is we'll go back up to our uh, high field erode. We'll do. Uh, high field mask by feature. And this is a great node for um, creating um, masks to do blend materials with. So we'll have one tileable texture for here, then we'll do one tileable texture for the mask. 
So we can do mass by slope. And a cool trick that I like to do with this is um, combining these masks. So I'll, what I'll do is copy and paste this mask by feature. I'll turn off slope and what we can do is we can do like mask by direction. So we can have it come from any given direction. So I'll just leave that on the default values. And if we want to get the tops of the surfaces, a cool trick to do the, with this is just to kind of um, invert these. Uh, so we have min and slope and max slope, and what we'll do is just kind of push that. And then we'll just make this endpoint be on, so that we'll just kind of capture it like that. So pretty flexible um, in terms of how you want to do it. Cool, so now we have three different masks, and what we can do is combine these by doing height field layer. And then what we'll do is we'll do layers, we'll do mask, and what we'll do is do an additive operation, which will just combine those, and we'll just copy and paste that and kind of daisy chain these up. So now we have uh, two different masks. And before we leave off, I'm just gonna kind of dial back on that. Whoops. Um, dial back on that one that's kind of sitting on top there. Cool, so now we'll just do a high field output and this will export it out as a texture. What we can do is do um, I'll make a new folder here called texture and then uh, the path we'll just do dollar hip uh, forward slash text forward slash terrain mask version one dot jpeg. And then for the channels, what we'll do is we'll just do the mass channel for each one of these. Cool, and then what we'll do is we'll just save the disk. Cool, so now we can just jump over to Maya. So we're starting with the fresh scene, and then what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just do file import. And we'll just navigate to that directory where we saved out that train. So we'll do train version one OBJ Cool, so I'll just hit F to full frame. And then what we can do from here is we can start laying this out with an instance node. So we'll just select this guy. We'll do edit duplicate special. And then what we'll do is we'll just go and reset these settings and then duplicate input graph. And then what we'll do is just duplicate this like 10 different times and hit apply. And I'll make a bunch of copies. So instancing, um, we went over this a bit before. Instancing is going to make a reference to the object and not actually duplicate it. So it'll be really, really lightweight on memory um, and render time as well. So um, I'll just kind of select these and hit um, Control H, hide them. And then I'll just do Shift H to kind of do one by one. And what we can do now is just kind of take each one of these and kind of scale it, rotate it, um, and slowly kind of build out a landscape. Just like that. And if we want to kind of like start testing a frame, what we can do is we can do create uh, uh, cameras and then we'll create camera. We'll just go ahead and call this render cam. And then um, some good go to uh, default values for this is um, if you set this uh, film gate to 35 millimeter academy, it's a good um, kind of default value to get the great aperture. Um, the standard focal lengths in Maya um, don't actually kind of translate very well over to something from a real camera, a real cinema camera. So I'll go ahead and click my film gate and then we'll kind of eye this up. With landscapes, it's always a good idea to kind of shoot with really, really long lenses. So I'm just going to put this up to a 90 millimeter. And then we can kind of just like eye this up like this. And then from there, we can just continue to kind of unhide these and just kind of like layer by layer um, move these back and you can see um, just by rotation and scaling um, you can get away with just one um, one of these tiles it's not it's not noticeable at all in terms of um, seeing like duplicate assets or anything just because like scaling 
and rotating uh, makes them all look so much different. Cool, so this isn't going to go turn out exactly like the cover art that we made, so this is going to be kind of like a replica of that. Um, so something like that. Next up, we'll just have um, a couple different things to do, and we've already went over this, so I'm kind of like, I'm going to jump forward a bit since we've covered how to do um, the rem remainder and just kind of give you guys a breakdown of this. So if we jump over to um, Chapter thir 13, Cover Art in Maya, and we'll see the the final layout, and it's very very similar to what we just started building. Um, there's a couple different things that I've added. I'll kind of go through those one by one. Um, so, step one, I would say, after you've done your your um, layout, is just to do a quick render. Um, I'm going to kind of come in here and just uh, downres these samples or downres this scene really quick. And I'll just go ahead and give this a render. Cool. One thing I'll have to do really quick to get the um, to get this scene matching what I I had and looked up is just go into setting preferences and um, make sure that you guys turn off the color management. So I had that turned off, so it's not doing anything. Cool. So this obviously took a little bit um, of time to get to this point in terms of uh, lighting. Um, I'm going to break down the textures for you, but just focusing on the lighting right now. Um, the way I kind of like to light trains like this is just to get um, a rim light going and have as much as I can fall in the shadow. Cool. So from here, we have the gobo setup. So if I check out... Um, this lighting right now, like it kind of feels really, really flat. It feels like it's kind of like in a void. So what I'll do here is I'll just um, unhide this gobo I have right here. And essentially I have this to be under render stats, um, primary visibility off right there. And that's just going to make sure that this isn't visible to the camera. So it's just going to cast shadow on my scene. So this is me kind of putting this uh, scene in a world. Um, you could take like some of these objects right here and duplicate them around and kind of cast shadows into the scene that way. Um, but the biggest thing here is that it, it's not kind of like in this empty void. There's something in here to cast like ambient shadows and that kind of stuff onto the scene. And we'll take a look at that render. And you can see exactly what that does. Um, we got this nice like foreground vignetting happening here. If I um, do this next gobo that I have here, um, you'll see that we're going to get this nice shadow kind of piercing through here. And that is essentially just a cube I kind of laid out there to mimic maybe like another train or something like that. Cool. So next up I have um, one, of the, one of the first things I would recommend doing is just laying down um, your depth atmosphere. So that's going to be this guy right here, so my very first one. Um, so I'll go ahead and control H on these guys so we can take a look at what, what this looks like just with that depth haze. And if I take a look at this, I see which one we're using. Um, it's going to be, I'll point it to you guys. Um, any one of these, like, overall uh, depths are going to work really, really well for this. So this scene, um, I didn't want it to be too noisy. So I went with um, this guy right here. It just has like a soft gradient that goes up the top. Let me full screen this for you. So this is just depth haze with vertical grad version one. Um, and if I take a look at now, um, this is where I'll, the real magic happens. Um, as soon as you get a little bit of atmosphere in there, just like this overall ambient at atmosphere, um, that's when the render starts to look really, really um, cinematic. Cool. Next up, we have our actual um, volumes. And essentially, these are going to be all, all of the redshift volumes that we made earlier in an earlier lesson. So redshift volume creates redshift volume with material. And essentially, I just kind of duplicate these around and kind of put them in these little pockets. 
um, somewhere or anywhere that um, um, all that moisture in the air could uh, collect. Whoops. Um, I have a couple different layers. So I have one just kind of like ambient cloud, one really soft like um, the mountains, and then I have another one that is going to be the mountain mist. So if I were to look at these and kind of point these out, um, any one of these uh, rolling hills would be really, really good for this. So um, this second one is the one I'm using for that one. And then I have another one of these uh, mountain mist right here just to kind of like give us some more breakup and that kind of stuff. I didn't want to use too many of these because I don't have like trees and that kind of stuff to kind of give it that texture detail. So I try to leave it as soft as possible. Cool, so we'll take a look at that in the render. Cool, so um, I'm gonna just go ahead and pause it from there. Um, we'll take a look at it in a, a bit of a higher quality once we get um, into Nuke. Uh, for now, I'm gonna break down the shader for you guys. So we'll do, we'll select this guy and we'll just do um, in the node editor. We'll go ahead and graph this. And essentially I have two different materials, but they're actually the same material. I just did a little bit of a, a luminous uh, adjustment on them. So I have one texture like this and then um, that's going to be the diffuse color so it goes into the diffuse color right there and then that's going to be driving the diffuse color for both of these shaders. So both these shaders are doing the exact same thing. Only thing I did differently here is one um, the gamma is slightly different so this one's slightly brighter than the other one. Next up, I have a grunge map that's going in here. So grunge maps, I can't uh, stress enough how important it is to put some sort of bump map on this. If I were to, if I were to come in here and just turn off um, the bump map here. So I'll just go into the RS bump map and go ahead and change that height scale to zero. And if I go ahead and fire by PR, and just take a look at what it looks like without a bump map. You'll see it looks very, very, very low res, very, very gamey. Cool. So not a lot going on. Um, and if I go ahead and tweak that value, put that to 20, you'll see we get a ton more detail. Um, and that's just using this very uh, generic kind of rocky looking um, grunge map. Uh, these were also provided for provided to us by textures.com so uh, thank you to them for allowing us to use their textures cool so those are going into the two materials and then we have this um, this mask that we made from Houdini that's going to be blending them together so that basically wraps it up from uh, with the 3d side we'll jump over to nuke now and do a breakdown of the comp. So um, the comp side is pretty basic. Not a lot going on in this one. Um, if you guys jumped into any of my nuke scripts before, um, there's a little bit more going on in there. Um, so I'll just kind of go down the tree here. So um, we have our EXR here. That's our render. Um, I have some vignetting going on here. So I'm just using a roto spline for this. I just kind of drew this around the mask just to kind of like push that shadow a little bit more. Um, here I'm just doing a little bit of a brighten, it, brighten effect. And if I go ahead and just hit this IP and do um, sRGB off, we can um, see what it looks like with that lookup table on it. So I'm just brightening it up like that. And then I have a little bit of atmosphere that I added on it here. So this is just another roto spline that I... Uh, made I blurred out like this and just kind of like overlaid like that and next up we have a little bit of a color grade so this is me just doing um, a color multiplication uh, getting a little bit more warmth in there and then we have it going through the um, lookup table so I'll go ahead and turn this off turn this back to sRGB and we have our grain and that wraps it up um, so that's going to wrap up the entire tutorial for us. So thank you guys for sticking out the entire way. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me.